I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, February 12, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Alahuzas? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Melody Kitt from the Crystal Beach Community Church. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Hear our prayer tonight, O oh God, as we come before you, asking your presence to be with us this evening. Help us, O oh God, as your people to build bridges and tear down walls, to bring unity and grace and be your conduit of grace to our brothers and sisters around the world. Tonight, give insight, discernment, and understanding, I pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. Please stand. Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here tonight. We will begin our uh, meeting tonight with the uh, public comments on the items that will not be discussed this evening. If you have any comments, please come forward. State your name and your address for the record, and you'll be given four minutes. Hi, my name is Chris Lang. I live at 502 Lincoln Avenue, and I just want to say thank you to the council for a quick resolution of our sharpening carts. Um, a lot of people seem to think that our leaders don't care, don't listen, hey, and don't do me, anything. Excuse me, interrupt you for one minute? Yep. This is one of the items that we're going to be discussing later. Can you wait till... We, this is one of the items that we'll be discussing later. Can you wait when it's time to discuss that? I can. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> do we have any comments? on the items that will not be discussed tonight. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Good evening, Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. I have two subjects I'm gonna try to cover in the four minutes allotted. First off, I would like to say uh, I was unable to stay at the last meeting for the sustainability discussion, and I do appreciate the opening of that, but I will have to say that in hearing, watching the uh, discussion, uh, one of the things that I brought up, and Carl Wagenfer and those of us in the Friends of the Anklote, we had asked for an environmental advisory committee years ago, and so I don't want you to forget that aspect because that can be rolled into uh, what you're talking about sustainability because you can't have sustainability unless you protect the environment as the mayor first said when that discussion first broke out but I do want to read a short little article here that was uh, in uh, the week magazine uh, what it does is it gets articles for various places Global warming devastating both poles. Rising temperatures are wrecking havoc in the Arctic and the Antarctic, melting at once pristine ice sheets and killing wildlife, according to two new U.S. government studies. The first report by NASA identified significant melting in a group of glaciers in eastern Ar Antarctica, a region previously deemed stable and unaffected by climate change. Satellite imagery suggests that the height of the glaciers feeding Vincennes Bay, an area due south of Australia, has dropped by nearly 10 feet since 2008, and the speed of melting is accelerating. The Vincennes Bay glaciers are crucial because they block the inland aurora and Wilkes ice basins from falling into the sea. If both basins collapse, sea levels could rise up to 92 feet. 92 feet submerging coastal communities around the world. Things are just as dire at the top of the planet. A study by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric <laughs> Administration found that 2018 was the second warmest year on record in the Arctic and the second worst for sea ice. The world's northernmost region is now so warm that it sheds ice even in the Arctic winter. The Bering Sea lost an area of ice the size of Idaho during two weeks in February. Two weeks, Idaho. 
Toxic algae blooms, typically a warm water phenomenon, are increasingly common in the region, fatally poisoning seals, walruses, and whales. The Arctic is experiencing the most unprecedented transition in human history, Noah researcher Emily Osborne said. So, I know you guys have been hearing this, but it's a tie between the environment. And one thing I do have to say, it was all nice talk about how tarpon is on the sustainability plan, and I haven't seen it, and I know you said Paul's working on it, and all y'all walking on it, but we've been talking about putting solar panels on all of our buildings. Secondly, we've talked about mitigation as far as our environment by minimizing tree removals. So these are very important things that do affect uh, what goes on in our climate and in our environment. Secondly, my second topic, uh, I'm not sure if any of y'all watched any of the State of the Union. I watched the hockey game instead. It was a good one. And uh, I did catch the clips afterwards. But I had a clip that President Trump uh, said that kind of caught my ear. He said that he was against government coercion, domination, and control. Mm -hmm. Coercion, domination, and control. Yet, later in his speech, he was talking about abortion. Now I know it's a touchy subject for everybody, but I can't think of any more <clears throat> intrusive aspect that Republican legislators and various uh, <clears throat> groups have pressed that interfere with someone's own particular body. That is between a woman and her doctor or husband or however that family unit is. So I just needed to point out the hypocrisy of that. And then the other fact, and I'll be quick about this, is that many people will speak about the unborn Dr. children she, in Mr. Delagos, has expired, Yes, I'm sir. aware of that. And that uh, stop, many times we look at that, that they're saving kids, but what about all these kids in the detention centers? We seem to forget about them after they're born. Thank you. Are there any other public comments or the items that will not be discussed tonight? Mm -hmm. Hear none, thank you. The first item on the agenda tonight is a proclamation on the National African American History Month. And the proclamation reads, the city of Tarpa Springs, Florida, Proclamation, where, whereas National African American History Month is observed in February of each year, and whereas for generations African Americans have <laughs> shared progress of our nation, making it stronger and a better place to live and work for everybody with the strength and determination. And whereas the city of Tarpa Springs is the home to African Americans who throughout the history have played a significant role in economic, culture, spiritual and political development while working uh, tirelessly to maintain and promote their culture and history. And whereas National African American History Month encourages all to come together and award towards the goal of liberty and justice for all and to, and to celebrate our diverse <laughs> heritage and culture and continue our efforts to create a world that is more just, peaceful and prosperous for all. Now therefore, I, Chris Alakuzas, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Tarpa Springs, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2019 as the National African American History Month. And I'd like to invite uh, Reverend Smith to receive this proclamation. Thank you, Reverend. Do you want to say a few words? To the uh, mayor and uh, commissioners, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, you all for recognizing the significance of uh, Black History Month, uh, the month of February. As the mayor has said, that African Americans have contributed uh, not only to Tarpon Springs, but throughout uh, the United States and around the world, have a rich history in, in a varying amount of fields that you could find that African Americans was the first to do. 
uh, in, in this country. And so it is important that we uh, remember our history, remember our past. <laughs> Therefore, we can uh, go into the future. So on behalf of uh, those of us that live in Tarpon Springs and, and those that live outside of the city and around the country, we thank you for recognizing this important month. Thank you, Reverend Smith. Are there any commission comments? Are there any public comments of this item? Here now, thank you. Item number two is a proclamation on the American Heart Month. Commission Sibir will read the proclamation. Thank you. City of Tarpon Springs, Florida proclamation. Whereas February is traditionally the month for all things heart related, it also reminds us to take care of our heart. It is American Heart Month. And whereas the annual celebration began in 1963 to encourage Americans to join the battle against heart disease, which is the leading cause of death for both men and women in the U.S. And whereas hospitals and health systems around the country celebrate American Heart Month by helping to raise awareness in communities about heart disease. And whereas the city of Tarpon Springs encourages involvement in American Heart Month by spreading the word about preventing heart disease and living heart healthy lives. Together we can build a culture of health where making the healthy choice is the easy choice. Now therefore I, Commissioner Rhea Sieber, by virtue of the authority of the vested in the mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, to hereby proclaim the month of February 2019 as American Heart Month. Thank you. Is anyone going to receive that? I think it goes to city clerk. Okay, no. then we're going to mail it then. Are there any commission comments? Here none. Are there any public comments on this item? Here none. Thank you. Moving on to uh, consent agenda. <coughs> Number three is the satisfaction and release of liens. Number four is a special event. Fine Arts Festival for March 9 and 10, 2019. B is St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral Orthodox Procession until March 17, 2019. C is Tarpon Fest Music Bass, March 23rd, 2019. D is the Greek Independence Day Parade for March 31st, 2019. E is Good Friday Procession, April 26, 2019. F is the uh, Sweet Corn Festival to, uh, on May 18, 2019. Mm -hmm. Number five is the award file, 190061 and JJ single source purchase of legal and promotion advertising. Six is the award file, 190066 and JJ public safety health screening. Number seven is to extend the file number 170090. CRS Laboratory Testing Services to the City of Plain City RFP 16-022-USS. Number eight is the award file number 190068NCM, single source purchase of uh, HVAC Delta Control Maintenance and Retrofit Services. Number nine is the award file number 190070CJJ virtualization services and related equipment for the city hall through uh, source well contract number 100614 CDW. We also have an addendum to a regular session agenda. Number one is to uh, authorize execution of uh, grant application for police department justice assistance grant program. And then number two is the authorization execution of the amendment to agreement between the city of Tarver Springs and Pinellas <coughs> County Sheriff's Office. Any of the items that you'd like to pull? I would like to pull 4A and number nine, please. 4A? Yes. And number nine. Any others to be pulled? Okay. Are there any comments on the uh, items with the exception of 4A and number nine? Are there any public comments on those items? Here none. I need a motion. Second. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor L. Who's this? Yes. We're going to do the uh, special events A, which is the Fine Arts Festival, March 9 through 10, 2019. Commissioner Carr? Thanks, Mayor. Um, 
I'm not sure if there's someone from the chamber here at all. Is there anybody? Chamber? No. Okay. Um, I've got somewhat of a concern here. If you look at the $5 entrance fee to the event, uh, there's actually multiple things I want to talk about. First um, is the signage that we have for that the event costs five dollars and then second that there's no pets allowed. Um, growing up in this area and spending a lot of time at this art festival throughout the years, there's a ton of people that come, pay for parking, they have their dogs with them and then they get to the entrance and they realize they can't bring their pet in and then also char they're charging five dollars. So uh, I think we should have some type of parameter in place first that advertises that there's or have a requirement that says there's no pets at the parking lots. And then also when you're coming into town or at the entrance at the top of the bayou that says no pets and there's a $5 entrance fee as well. But there, I also want to point out a couple other things. Uh, there's a $5 entrance fee. My understand, I mean, I didn't see, but um, I may have missed what the city's charging for the chamber to use the area, but I didn't see a charge. The entrance fees, if they're estimating 15,000 people, comes out to about $75,000. I don't know what they're charging the artist, but let's say they're charging the artist four to $500 a, a booth. That comes out to another $105,000. So you're looking at the chamber bringing in $180,000 on a weekend with city staff being used, policing being used, um, the park being run down. And then we're also limiting our services from the boat ramp, we're limiting our services to the tennis courts, we're limiting our services to the park also. I feel that the city needs to either require a smaller entrance fee or require some type of payment, and then we could use that for marketing of some sort for the use of this area. If the chamber is gonna be making $180,000 potentially plus on this event using city resources, city property, et cetera. So I wanted to bring us up and have a discussion amongst the board and see if there's anything else that anybody else wanted to talk about or anybody else agrees with what I'm talking about. Mayor, may I just comment? Sure. Um, first of all, this isn't a city event, it's a chamber event. So um, this would have to be discussed with the chamber. And um, Yes, I'm not happy with the $5 fee since they've raised it. They used to be $5 plus you'd get a drink with that of some sort, a refreshment. They, they took that out. But um, this is their main fundraiser for the year. So this is how the chamber pays all their bills for the year, their employee, employees. This is like, this is their huge, a huge event. And this is also big for our city. I mean, this bring this brings hundreds and thousands of people to our community, and the entire city benefits from it. All our. Um, I'm not denying that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm not denying that. I just wanted you to know that you know, um, I mean, do we charge Mark? Do we charge the chamber? We don't charge the chamber, do we? You know, like every other event, you know, they pay for you know. They pay for the police. Employees, they pay for just like they pay like every other event does. Right. So they, it's not like they're getting everything free. Um, <laughs> What I would like to see is the chamber uh, give passes to the residents that live in that area so they can get uh, in and out of their properties because they're kind of, I mean, it's... Parking's tough. Parking's bad, and they can't get into their... Some of them want to go to church on Sunday, and they can't get in and out because of this event. So there should be some sort of a pass um, that they could put in their cars, and they should be able to get home through the alleyways or whatnot, through the back streets. Mm -hmm. That I would like to see. And I, I believe in the past, and I don't know if they're doing it this year, that they also would give... Um, each resident two passes to get into the art show for free because of the inconvenience that it causes for the weekend. So that that's what I know about the art show. I don't know. I know there's nobody here from the chamber, but um, I know, like I said, it brings a lot of people into the community and everybody benefits from it. Mayor? Yes. Uh, yeah, you're right. This is their uh, big fundraiser of the year. Unfortunately, they don't have too many other fundraisers, but I guess they just um, need that money for to run the chamber and that's what they they use this event for it is a 45th annual event and as you know it's very popular um as far as the five dollars like uh commissioner kitka said yeah I, they used to give a drink you know you used to be able to get a drink like a beer or soft drink or whatever for that amount but they don't do that anymore uh, my concern is the parking though because um i know that they make some of the streets one way uh south spring people park all along that road. It's already a narrow road. 
Uh, so if, if you're coming heading south or north, <clears throat> or if two cars are coming, you got to back up all the way to you know Craig Park or back up into somebody's parking uh, spot or you know entryway because there is no way for two cars to pass. So I would like to see them consider South Spring also being a one way during the event because there's no way you can have cars parked all the way down that street and have two cars pass each other. So uh, historic <laughs> areas like that. Ooh. Well, they do make some of those streets one way, so they'll. You know, so that cars are not passing. So I, I realize it's kind of tight for everyone, but I know that many times I've had to back up to somebody's driveway or all the way back to Craig Park because they're coming at you, and it's like, well, where am I going to go? <laughs> so uh, that's something that for them to consider adding, uh, as lo as well as the other streets that uh, are inconvenienced. <laughs> you know, uh, as everybody else says, uh, this is really the main uh, revenue, the main. Uh, the uh, main resource of revenue that they have, uh, the chambers, and they contribute a lot to our uh, business community, all three of them, the uh, US-19, the downtown, and the Sprint Stock. So uh, we need to support them as much as we can. Parking has always been an issue, and, and I'm not sure. I wish somebody was here from the chamber to tell us, but uh, perhaps that uh, they start thinking about transporting people from other parking areas that uh, it's available with the bus and bring it down to the bayou so people don't have to look and parking on the street or on a private property. So um, I wish somebody was here so we can actually, ex you know, uh, relay the other uh, message to them. But uh, Mr. Likuris, is there any way that we can uh, get in touch with them uh, tomorrow, let them know if it's possible to use, to, uh, uh, to use parking in a different location and transport people with buses. I think they do that already. Doing that anyway? Tower. No. Yeah, the doing that tower. anyway. <laughs> so I, I don't know what else they can. Or making South Spring a one way would help. I, I would agree. With you. I mean, mm -hmm. the whole historic area. I mean, all those oh, narrow roads, all back How there. Those from those are one way. Uh, yeah, from most of those they make one way. They, they have one signage. Way. For but those. South Spring, they don't make one. Way. But it doesn't. We don't have that in our backup. So yeah. what I'm saying is that if we're talking about a one way street, we need to probably look at all of them from. The Spring Bayou to Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, if they're going to allow parking in the street, then I know. Well, take that back. You can only park on one side of the street to begin with, so we should look at we park on the east it, side of that street. Yeah, and then making all of them one way to make sure that it's in this backup <laughs> here when it's if it's approved that this is what the commission expects for the safety of the residents and the safety of our visitors. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, I, I do sympathize with some of this tonight. Um, two things. I mean, first off, yes, we definitely can have a, have control over the streets and the and, and the one the parking. They're they're not renting the streets, at least the parks that are, that, 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 that 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 they're not closing down. And we can, you know, through our through our through our police department, enforce the one ways and or 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 or, or, or any no parking areas like that. And I assume, as their use of the police force in that, they could be they could be, they could be billed appropriately. But as far as the entrance fee and the pets, I mean, you know, I don't really have an opinion on it either way. But you know, we approve uh, uh, the um, though though a lot of events that 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 that, 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 that have entrance fees, like 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 the Greek festival, other things, and we don't. I don't really want to get inside events we approve. For what they're charging, or if or if they're allowing pets or not, because that's I think just outside of what of, of what we should be focusing on, especially an event that's I think it's as old as I am or older. I'm not sure, but we definitely do have control over the streets, the parks. They're not closing down, and we should use our police department to uh, to enforce traffic rules and parking. But I, I wouldn't get in the business of uh, what they're charging and and pets and and on whatnot. So that 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 that's just my opinion. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I wish somebody from the chamber was here because it concerns me that they completely depend on this one event a year um, and they don't have others. Uh, if something happened and it rained the whole weekend, they'd be wiped out. <laughs> so that's you know, something I think that they should consider is, is doing you know other things to raise money besides just one event a year. But that's something for the chamber to discuss. Have another, something else? If not, I'm going to the public. Comment. Yeah, I was just going to say this is an opportunity that I know that there's some 
the board has talked about marketing funds in the past, and this is really a true marketing aspect that we could partner with the chamber then to say, if you're going to be leveraging all these funds in this fundraiser, how are they, how are you working with the city of staff and our marketing department and economic developer to market the city with the businesses that are part of the chamber? And it would be interesting to see how that relationship's going and uh, maybe get an update from the chamber as well. Um, and maybe I just don't know when they're doing that. So I apologize if I'm naive in this situation. Um, but I just, it's a significant amount of money that's being raised and we're allowing it if we're approving it and we still have to be responsible because it's an image of Tarpon Springs when people come here regardless if it's not a city event or not people if they get to the front and say oh five dollars it used to give a drink ticket or five dollars it used to be two dollars or it used to be a dollar um, these are things that people are the image of Tarpon Springs that they're getting an image of and then if they don't have good signage at the entrance way that says no pets before you pay for parking, you've already paid $10 for parking. Now you got to have a, a, one of the couple, one of the individuals wait outside with their dog while the other one goes walk around. So maybe they wouldn't have gone in if that wasn't the case. So all I'm saying is maybe we do a little bit better and encourage the chamber to put some better signs out. Um, we could put it on our kiosk that we have a beautiful orange sign at the entrance way of our cities that maybe say no pets, the fun arts, and um, entrance fees, $5, something along those lines. Um, so I have no further comments. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to the public comment. Ma'am, you have something to say? If you please come to the podium, state your name and your address for the record, please. Chris Lang, 502 Lincoln Avenue. Um, I just wanted to tell the commission that they do have the parking at the Tarpon Towers. I volunteer there, and it's full every year. So they do utilize that with the trolleys. Okay. Could use a Thank you. splash plug, too. Are there any other comments on this item? You yeah, know? <clears throat> I will entertain a motion. Motion, please. Second. And roll call. Can I add anything to it? Well, we have a first and second. If you could add to a motion, though, can't you? You can. What's your ad? It's sad that, that we ask that they put signs at the top of the bayou and where you have parking that the, there's fees of $5 and um, you, there's no pets allowed. Make sure that that's clearly stated. Well, the person who made the motion is to accept that. I think we need, and I'm okay to compromise on that. What do you need to be more specific? I mean, there's lots of private parking, so where do you want, specifically want the signs? I'm fine with that amendment, but when I, when it, when it, when it, when it, when it, when it, yeah, it needs to be at the wherever the parking lots are. If it's they're transferring transferring people from the Tarpon ta Tarpon Towers, it should be there, and it should also be at the top of the bayou where people are dropping people off to walk in. Parking lots that are under their purview. Yes. Not the Boy Scout lots and the private ones. So, so the so <laughs> so their so their so their parking lots, and then clear signage at the entrance about the fee and the no pets. At the top of the bayou. At the top of the bayou. Yeah, where the road's closed down. So basically at, you know, you would say banana and spring, basically. Yeah. At the sign of banana and spring. Correct. It, it, is that clear enough to Mr. Attorney, the manager, is that? Yeah. All right, that's fine. And, and the second as well? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. And roll call. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Kikta? Yes. Mr. Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Bantham? Yes. Mayor Alahuzis? Yes. yes. You also pulled item number nine? Mission Carr. Yeah. Um, this I had a question about this, and this, this can you come up and is that right? Hey, Suzanne. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. Sure, she's ready for you. I, she was <laughs> here, so I saw her, and I'm. <laughs> My question is, uh, why don't we outsource this to like an area that's outside of City Hall? If this is primarily for like a backup and redundancy, and to like a data area that have backups that's protected from hurricane water intrusion and other aspects i just want to kind of understand that a little bit better because well, the primary um, what i was reading it looks like it was for backup and redundancy our public safety facility is actually a secure facility and that's why we moved all of our servers from city hall to the public safety building um, we would like to um, have a relationship with the downtown sheriff's office and eventually we would like to look into doing that but 
you know, for connectivity and um, fees, there just isn't connectivity yet to that office. Did we look at what it would cost to do this, like in a data center in Tampa at all? Well, we looked at cost and what the fees were for those types of facilities would far outweigh what we could do to do redundancy between ourselves. Okay. And since we need to keep the police department open in a um, in the event of a disaster, um, we Suzanne, really can you also explain that we do back up everything with tapes and that's offsite, so yes, there's total is. redundancy. There is total redundancy. We do back up some to the cloud, <laughs> um, but everything is sent offsite 20 miles inland um, from our shores. Okay. So the what's the life of these servers typically? About, well, um, our warranty is five years, but we tend to stretch that. We keep our servers for about seven to eight. Okay. And, um, well, sometimes even longer than that, but we stretch it as long as we can. So I'm assuming that it's more than that came out to be. So it's more than $15,000 a year to back up in a data center then? It's a lot more than that. And you have to look at your restoration times also. In the event of a disaster, if that data center is part of that disaster, especially in Tampa, because there are very low-lying areas there also, we would not have accessibility to go in and actually restore that. With our virtual servers that we have, we can actually take one set, take it, and drive or fly it away so that we're back up and running before anyone else. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. I just wanted to comment is that I'm in banking and this is common practice in banking. So we hire companies in other states and we fly everything out there. This is, you know, this is a security issue. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, this is very common practice. Thank you. I'm glad this is that we're doing this. Thank you for that. Thank you. I, 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 I just want to thank Suzanne. It's probably the 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 the, the, the last time that I'll that, that I'll that I'll be, be be able to that you've taken our our, our department from zero to hundred, and uh, I know when I started we didn't even have like Microsoft Office support, and now we have virtual servers, and I got to watch you during during the hurricane, you and your colleagues, and it was a top notch job, and I have full faith that if we have a disaster that. We 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 will have minimal issues. So so thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Suzanne, can you state your name for the record? Suzanne Van Horn, Information Technology Director. Suzanne, just give my uh, thanks to you, uh, you, uh, uh, to your staff for doing an excellent job. I've been talking to them constantly. Thank you, sir. They are, uh, I will say, they all. But the best that you can find. They are. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just add to my questions aren't drill like I'm not trying to question your work ethic or anything along those lines. So thank you for what you're doing. I hope it doesn't come, come across a little bit harder than I'm meaning. So no, sir, not at all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Are there any commission comments of this item? I, are there any public comments of this item? No. Roll call, please. Commissioner, we need a motion and a second. A motion. Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Now we'll go to a roll call. Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Kikta. Yes. Commissioner Seaver. Yes. Vice Mayor Banther. Yes. Mayor Alhuzas. Yes. And now we go to the special consent agenda. Item number 10 is the award file 190062CJJ Storm Sewer Cure, um, cure in Place uh, Pipelining. Pinellas County contract number 167-0513. Mr. Liqueurs? Yes, this is this is one of those items on on the special consent only for the cost. Um, Mr. Smith couldn't be here tonight. I know he's got Tom standing in in case you got more technical. But basically, if you remember the presentation about these, he gave a presentation where we were talking about projects, um, about doing this. And, of course, he talked mainly about the main project that we're going to begin immediately with this contract, the Safford project. Um, he gave an explanation. Of, that's what this bid is for. Tom, if you have more, if you have pipe or that sort of questions, uh, you can do. But I think Mr. Smith kind of laid out what we're doing with these pipes and, and the products. And uh, again, 
our first example is going to be a crucial line on Safford um, to do this process with. So if you have any questions for Tom, he can call him up and uh, ask me a more technical one. I don't have a question, but I'd like to comment that uh, it's, it's nice to be proactive and reconditioning the old sewer lines is going to give us at least 10 more years life lifespan on that. So in the long run, we're going to be better off and uh, I appreciate that we're doing that. Any commission comments? Let's get a quick one. I, sure. I just want to kind of piggyback what you're saying. Uh, this is a great, I think, opportunity for the city to actually save from ripping up a road entirely to replace sewer lines. And it's a great way to minimally have an impact in the area and also save a significant amount of money. So um, great job to Paul Smith and his group and everyone else that has been involved with this. Uh, so thank you city staff for uh, finding the new innovative ways to save money but also extend our infrastructure as well. Thanks. Are there any uh, public comments on this item? Here none. Chair will detain a motion. Motion approved. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Merrill, who's this? Yes, thank you. We're now going to the item number 11 is to authorize execution of acknowledgement of non interest of real property on Spruce Street. Staff report. Tom, do you want to talk about this one? Or? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, the uh, city attorney's office received a letter from an attorney by the name of Thanasi Pulit. Pulikidis, I'm sorry, Pulikidis. <laughs> Pulikidis. Okay, um, and uh, he had an, uh, a client by the name of Stella Megalutis, uh, who has a revocable trust that owns property that is near some property that the city owns. The city owns about approximately a 10-foot wide sliver of land uh, next to the parcels that are owned by Mrs. Megalutis. Uh, the parcel that we have at one time had a street in it. That street or road has um, migrated onto Mrs. Megalutis's property. Um, she was requesting through her attorney uh, that uh, the city acknowledge the fact that you know that we're not claiming any interest in her property, um, even though that little dirt road has migrated onto hers. Um, we did a little bit of research. We tried to find out how the property was conveyed to the city, but uh, the property appraiser's records are not accurate. It doesn't reflect the proper deed. We've been unable to find how we actually became owners of that property, but, but we do own it. Um, it's 10 foot wide. And so to avoid any possible title issues or marketable title issues, the property owner next door is asking for the mayor to be able to sign something to acknowledge the fact that we're not claiming any interest in her property. This short acknowledgement that's attached to your staffing is that acknowledgement that basically just says that we, the city doesn't have any interest in her property. Um, and that will be give her the ability to um, market that property that she owns for sale without an argument being made that um, the sale should be void as a direct result of this migrating road across her property. So um, we're requesting authority from the commission to authorize the mayor to sign this acknowledgement that we don't have any interest in Mrs. Megalutis's property. Thank you. Tom, the only question that I have is, do we, are there any underground utilities on this, on this property? Uh, we, we did have staff look at that, and we have nothing there in, okay. in that area. Um, and so, um, and even if we did have it in our 10 feet, we're not giving up our 10 feet. We're maintaining that. We're just saying that we don't have any interest in her, pro her, her property. Right. Any commission comment? Are there any uh, public comments on this item? Sure. Did I butcher your name? A little bit. Sorry. <laughs> You know, I've lived in Tarpon almost all my life, and I still can't get <laughs> all the Greek names right. So, so Thanasi Poulikidis <laughs> for the Stella Megalutis Revocable Trust, and um, you did a very good job of succinct, succinctly summarizing that up. Uh, the land uh, in question is actually vacant land on Spruce Street, and it's uh, lots numbers 5, 6, and 7. And uh, the clients had three or four people come, and they're interested in purchasing the land, developing homes on it, bring people in. Uh, they come and they see it and they inevitably get cold feet. There's this little piece of a dirt road, as, as uh, Attorney Trask put it, who over the course of 30 years appears to have 
done an S directly through the corner of the property. So everybody that comes to look at it says this is going to raise some sort of a title issue and they inevitably throw their hands up and they say, you know, what, we're not interested. Um, so with the purpose of uh, clearing any title issues, um, we're not asking the city affirmatively do anything. We're not asking that the dirt road be put back onto the city's 10-foot parcel, just merely execute an acknowledgement to be recorded in the public records, putting the public at large on notice that though this is a little bit of a neighboring dispute, the city isn't claiming any right title or interest into privately owned property. Um, that's, that's more or less the, the gist of it. And I do want to thank uh, the ladies and gentlemen of the, the commission and uh, Attorney Trask who I've spoken with at length about this and Mr. Mayor for, for, for taking the time to address this issue. Thank you. Are there any other public comments of this item? <clears throat> Here none. I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Excuse me. One second. Oh, okay. I didn't see him. him coming. Okay. Peter Lax, 514 Ashland Avenue. Uh, not aware of this issue till I saw it and read about it. And there's a 10 foot section of uh, of city property through Miss Megalutis's property or just adjacent to it. And I'm curious if there's no uh, easement aspects, uh, why the city or the attorney won't work with the city for the vacation of that property so it could be included into, uh, you know, what she's going to sell. I would just curious as to, you know, is that 10 foot piece still going to be there and what purpose does it serve? Does it serve an easement? It's just some of the questions I think would be uh, relevant to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments on this item? Hear none. I will retain the motion. Vote to approve. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banter? Yes. Merrill, who's this? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Item number 12 is to approve the art of service of uh, St. Kate Fine Art for installation of the uh, NIADS. Mr. Lacourse. Yes, Diane Woods and our chairman of the Public <laughs> Art Committee, who's done a lot of work to try to get this to you on the agenda for tonight, like we promised to try, and a lot of work's been done, and hopefully we're at a resolution, something that you can approve tonight, and we can get started. Right. Oh, so, uh, well, we um, actually uh, wanted to you know, present something that would enhance the statues um, and the site that was chosen for it at the end of the sponge docks. And uh, we were able to find a wonderful uh, installer. They're actually an art um, concierge, so to speak, but um, they have had extensive um, uh, experience in um, installing this type of, you know, art piece that um, I, we feel very strongly that they'll do a wonderful job. They're going to incorporate the Greek stone that we have from a local vendor, um, create um, a water feature if that's desired out of the Greek stone, and uh, <coughs> they have great experience installing the um, naiads so that um, they will be uh, very stable and safe, you know, for all visitors that come through there and a showpiece for the city of Tarpon Springs. Um, so, um, you know, the art, uh, public art committee and I feel like this is, you know, a wonderful thing to do and um, actually with your approval they can start, you know, very quickly and they said that the whole job would take probably, um, you know, two to three weeks at the most. So, are there any questions? No, the comment that I want to make is that uh, uh, with the water feature, the only difference is only $825. I'd like to have the water feature included into that. And also, I want to thank uh, our employees for doing a lot of work in the ho in the house. It's going to save quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. Probably half of the price, eh, Mark? Yeah. I'll say so. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, let me thank you. Sir. Yes, <coughs> I'm so excited. This is, this is finally coming to fruition after all these years. And I want to thank you for inviting me to meet with you all uh, a couple of times. I actually had the opportunity to see the NIADS the other day. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and they're much taller or bigger than I thought. <laughs> yes. And they're heavy. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't move them. Uh, but I'm looking forward to this uh, hopefully being done before high season in March. Uh, 
so we can have it down there in time for all our tourists, uh, the wine walk coming up, and Absolutely. a lot of different events that are happening down at that end. Um, you know, we had talked about, um, when I invited Mick to come to one of those meetings, about putting, and I forgot to ask you about this the other day, about putting, I forgot what he called it. The bollards? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Around that. <laughs> have you all thought about this anymore, or is that going to cause a, any well, kind of issue? That's, um, that's something that can be done after the fact, after it's installed. Um, I, what um, the install uh, St. Kate uh, artisans, they had recommended is let's get the installation in because we felt like one of the nice things about this installation is that people can get up close and personal and they take pictures with it. The bollards would kind of prevent them from doing that. They are going to put um, a sealant on the stone so that if it rains or anything splashes from the fountain, that it won't be a hazard for people. So they won't, you know, won't be slippery and everything. So they really can get up and take those photos. And for from the tourism aspect of it, I feel like that's a real positive. Now, after it is installed and we see just exactly what it looks like, if you still feel like you know, it would be good to install those. We could do that, you know, after the fact, but. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. thought about that because sure. I thought it was a good idea at the time just to prevent a lot of activity on, you know, on the stones or, you know, uh, on the naiads, but no, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank mm -hmm. you for all your hard work uh, to the committee as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad we're moving on. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Ms. Woods, and I want to thank you and in the committee. I know this has been uh, quite a process, and thank you for um, putting up with us. <laughs> but um, I think we have a great project um, here, and I'm so happy that we're finally going to see this completion of the project. And I really do. Um, I support the, the the option with the water feature. I think that's that's a fabulous idea. I think the stone's going to be a great mm -hmm. um, addition. Um, so. Again, I thank you all for your hard work, and, and I know hopefully we can move some of our other projects along a little faster and all get on the same page, but um, this is going to be a great a great thing for the sponge docks down there, and I think it's going to draw a lot of people and stuff. So, so thank you so much. I just had one more comment. I'm glad that I was able to connect you guys with Irene mm -hmm. so that we have the rocks coming from Kalimnos, so we have a little bit of... Uh, history on the sponge docks uh, since a lot of the people down there are Colombians. So, you know, I'm excited that you're using those rocks as well. They're beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I, I had an, an additional sure. question. It was about the lighting. So, mm -hmm. there will be lighting out there, correct? <laughs> yes. Um, originally, um, when we first conceived the project, we, you know, looked at doing um, in ground lighting, um, but uh, St. Kate. Um, Art, they recommended, they said, you know, if you take a flashlight and you put it up to your face, it kind of makes it look garish. So they recommended doing it on the poles um, so that they could do, they use LED lights and they can focus them on the statues. And I feel like, they feel like the lighting will be much more, um, will enhance the statues, you know, and make them look, you know, nice at night, but it'll also, um, provide an additional safety factor down at the roundabout too because it'll you know give light to that area in a you know I guess a, a more proficient way and it won't bother traffic people driving around or shine into the no because they are focused okay yes so okay. it will not impede anyone right. that's and they're pretty much experts on that I will yeah. go ahead and ask them you know to be sure and you know they have a lot of experience with installations so I'm sure they'll take that in consideration Thank Good you. Point. Thank, you. Mr. Clark, have a Thank you to the art committee and Diane and the staff for uh, coming back with this. I support option B with the water feature. Uh, I think I've had enough comments in the past meetings about this. So thank you for um, <clears throat> coming back with this with the water feature and Mark for working with the art committee and your staff to bring this forward. Thanks. Thank you. Before I go to the public comments, Diane, I want to thank you and I want to thank the committee, all the members of the committee for the hard work that they do. Thank you so much. Thanks. The labor of love. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any public comments on this item? I hear none. 
the chair will detain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. In roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. And Merrill, who's the? Yes. So and that. Be with the water, right? Yeah. 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 Like I shot clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And now we go into the item number 13, which is the ordinance 2019-01. This is the application 18-122, the shopping cars. This is the second reading. And the uh, city attorney, if you please read the ordinance. <laughs> yes, I just want to advise the, uh, the commission that the legal advertising was done in the Tampa Bay Times. Uh, it was advertised on January 19th and January 25th of this year. The ordinance title reads, Ordinance Number 2019-01, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending Chapter 8, Health and Sanitation, by adopting Article 5, Shopping Carts on Public Property, providing for retrie a retrieval plan, identification of shopping cart signage, removal and storage of shopping carts, and, and penalties and remedies, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for modification that may arise at public hearing, and providing for an effective date. That was the second final reading of Ordinance 2019-01 by title only. Thank you. Staff report. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Heather Earl, our Planning and Zoning Director, and staff to this application. Um, there has been no additional information since uh, second read, so, or since first read. Um, so if you have any questions, I can answer any questions. But other than that, there are no, is no additional information. I don't have any questions, but uh, I'm disappointed that uh, the store owners that really haven't responded at all. We have not heard from the um, from the store owners in my office, and I know the the chief the chief of police and the code enforcement folks have been really helpful in trying to reach out to those to those store owners, and there hasn't been any, any effort to reach back out to us. After all, that's their responsibility to secure their property. That's true. Commission comments. Well, that's that's one of the questions I had. You haven't heard from any of them, so. That is disappointing because we're anxious to move this forward and if they don't cooperate, it's gonna make it difficult for us. I'm not sure it's completely no cooperation, but these are going up all over Florida. So I think a lot of, the, especially the bigger ones, have the realization that there is no argument to fight against it and it's inevitable gonna come. And I think some of it, I mean, there may be some happy there, but some of it, you know, who have them other places, they're seeing these ordinances come all over. So mm -hmm. I think they're almost expecting this kind of thing and them to, you know, be <coughs> forced by this to do their obligation or else. So I think that's that's part of it. Maybe not all of it, but I think that's part of it. It just seems like they're ignoring us. <laughs> yeah, I know there hasn't been any response, but if they don't put up the signs within 60 days they'll get a we'll hear we'll have a response pretty quickly i think because then they're against code and then they'll be getting a fine so yeah then it'll be pretty quick so um thank you for again bringing this back up and the the resident for bringing this uh before us and recommending it I'm happy that we're able to uh, bring this forward in a timely in a timely fashion i'm looking forward to this uh moving forward thank you heather we are now going to the public comments Thank you for waiting all this time. <coughs> Chris Lang, 502 Lincoln Avenue. I just want to thank the board for their quick response to this. Um, a lot of people feel that they don't come to these meetings and they don't think our th leaders listen, but obviously this proves them wrong. So I hope more people will come and give their opinion. I also noticed that once it was brought out into light, everybody's got an opinion. So um, <laughs> I'm glad to see this move forward and it cleans our city up. Thank you. Thank you. Pier Delax 514 Ashland Avenue. Uh, I'm a little surprised that there wasn't any uh, changes to some of the language. Uh, this is not to the intent of the ordinance because I wholeheartedly agree with the intent. I just need to make sure we're clear on a few things. One, this only involves public property. <coughs> so if you see carts on someone's vacant lot, that's not under this jurisdiction. 
A uh, couple of things in the ordinance as a process aspect I would like again to point out. Uh, as it was first mentioned uh, by Heather uh, at the last meeting that uh, in item C under 897C where it says the retail establishment must employ at least two of the following methods and there's a selection of four. Again, I'm not sure if y'all are wanting two of these four or if one is sufficient. Uh, secondly, um, in 88-102-2 says each day a violation con continues after receipt of a written notice of such violation shall constitute a separate violation. It says here receipt of a written notice, but in paragraph 8-1 above in dash one, there's no mention of a process to notify the cart owners. You have the names, supposedly the names and the information on the carts, but I don't see anything in the process here. Secondly, if there isn't anything in this process, one of the things that I'm concerned about is that there is no appeal process such that uh, the owners or the people who have the carts, and again, we have to remind the public that these carts are not on the business owner's property due to a theft, a crime that is out of their control. So we have to also put that in perspective. But my, two cons my main concerns, as I mentioned, is that one, there is not an identifiable process. It says uh, it shall go to, uh, so public works department shall remove and place and storage shopping carts found on public property. That's where it ends. Uh, to me, there should be something in there. Public Works has the phone numbers. They have some process to notify. Is there a time frame for them to retrieve the carts without a penalty? Is there a, a, a first-time warning where the first set of carts you get, you've warned them, and the second time there's a difference? And as I pointed out also last time, where it says violations of this article may be public punished by providing section 1-8. Again, if you look in the municipal codes, 1-8 is a general penalty, which goes back to the uni municipal uniform, um, uniform municipal code charges. So again, I didn't see what there was any research to see if there was already a fine or a fee tied to shopping carts under the municipal uniform code. So there are some uh, things that look to be cleaned up or clarified a little bit, but in general i don't feel that this ordinance uh, is faulty or not worth going forward but i do feel that there are some procedural aspects that uh, still need to be looked at and resolved before we put this out to the business community who will be responsible for this after they've suffered the crime of theft thank you thank you <coughs> are there any other public comments of this item you are none i will entertain a motion Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Seaver? Yes. Vice Mayor Bantha? Yes. Merrill, who's this? Yes. We're now going to the item number 14, which is the ordinance 2019 mm -hmm. 02, the application 18 <laughs> 148 LDC amendment development agreement. This is the first reading. Mr. Tony, if you please read the ordinance. This is ordinance 2019-02, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending paragraph D of section 96.00 of article six of appendix A, comprehensive zoning and land development code, by increasing the duration of a development agreement by providing for severability and providing an effective date. The legal, the legal advertising in this, on this particular ordinance will show that it will be um, advertised um, in the Tampa Bay Times on January 11, 2019 for a second reading to be held on February 26, 2019. Thank you. Staff report. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, Commissioners. Again, Heather Erler, Planning and Zoning Director and staff to this application. Uh, this is a modification to the development uh, agreement section that essentially would extend the, the ability of this board to provide for a 10-year time frame rather than a five-year time frame, is what, which is what the limitation in the code currently is. Currently, the process is if a developer, developer comes in and negotiates an agreement with you, it comes through the Planning and Zoning Board, then comes to this board. 
um, through a process. And then once this board has, you know, approved that deal agreement, it can they can ask for up to five years. Should you authorize the five years, they can then come back through and ask for an extension. However, when they come back through and ask for extension, it opens up that entire developer agreement during the extension process to all new sec all sections of code that have been adopted within that window of time. So if it's a five-year window over the five years, if it was a two-year window over the two years, whatever the ex the difference in the changes in code. So. It's really difficult for a developer coming in who has a project that is somewhat complicated or has a, a dealt with issues of financial crisis or that type of thing to have any kind of certainty within their development process. So what we're asking for is simply to provide an additional five years on that window of time that can be negotiated through the development agreement process and ultimately decided on it by this board at that final hearing when a developer agreement is actually approved. Um, that's really what the crux of this particular application is. Technical review team, which is comprised again of the, of the city staff, was um, on board with this and had no concerns. The planning and zoning board voted it down 7-0. So it was a vote to deny and not recommend this uh, change. So that's really the crux of the issue that's here. I can answer any questions that you have, but that is the staff report. Thank you, Heather. Um, in your professional opinion, do you know if we have any projects that the duration of five years was not enough for them to finish the other project? Uh, I can think of one right now, which is Lowe's. Um, and that particular project, the result of that, again, was the economic downturn that kind of soured the, the, with the economy. They kind of walked away and then had to come back through the process. So they, again, had to go come back through with the development agreement process and basically extend their agreement to finish out that project. And again, it's going to be up to the BOC to decide if it's going to grant anything more than any longer than five years. That's correct. And it doesn't have to necessarily be five years under the current thing. It's anything from zero to five years. It's whatever this board negotiates as part of that process. Again, all of those items are, um, we essentially bring that those issues up to you, say these are the, the, the crux of the agreement and what the duration of the agreement, that's all discussed at the time of the staff's presentation. And so all of that information at that night uh, when the developer agreement is discussed is basically open for negotiations and approval by this board or you can send them back and say X, Y, and Z. Generally, what you have when you get that, um, those time frames is you actually have um, a phasing schedule or something that justifies why it's five years versus I just want five years. There's usually a justification as part of that process. Okay. Thank you. Any, any commission comment? Commission Kim. Thank you. Um, thanks, Heather, for bringing this forward. Um, I, I did watch the tape of, of this planning and zoning meeting, um, and I apologize for the behavior towards you. Um, and I did have the opportunity to talk to a couple different developers because I was like, I wasn't sure, you know? I mean, I think five years is enough, but really five years is not enough. Um, there's so many, so many agencies that these developments have, especially when it's a big development, they have to go through a lot um, to, get, to get approvals, and it could take four to five years just to get the approvals from these agencies. But um, what is the, the requirement for the state? Is it 30 years? You can have up to 30 years under the state statute. So you can adjust that window of time. Obviously, 10 years, we feel, based on the projects that you've seen over the last 20 years or so, is a justifiable amount for you to be able to get a project done through that time frame. Um, but again, that's something that, again, the subject to your interpretation, if you would like to see more or less, that's something that we're open to that discussion. So we, we don't have to go the whole 10 years. If the project comes in front of us, we could say we want to put seven year time frame. We don't have to go the whole 10. We can go up to 10. Correct. Okay. It's giving you, the, it's giving you the, the board the flexibility to give them up to that 10 year time frame if they, again, provide you the backup that supports that. Right, right. And, you know, I don't understand where the um, PNZ board was coming from on this. They say they were confused, but, I mean, I watched it. And um, we ultimately, as a board, have the say-so on the time frame. So I, I, I don't see a problem with this and, and um, approving this tonight. Thank you for your work on that. Thank you. Vice Mayor Panther. Thank you. And I don't have much more to add than, 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 than what the mayor asked and Commissioner Kitka. Um, you know, I think that the big thing is that this board still has the authority to only grant five years or less. 
or, or, and then I, if we think it's a it's a development that is, that is complex and um, you know we, we need to attract those those kind of de those, those 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 kind of developers in certain parts of our town we have we have the authority then to go to to go up to 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 go up to to, to the to the to, to, to the ten year ten year mark but um, the fact that we have the we have the authority here it's not it's not the developer that gets to just pick that um, I'm comfortable with that. And also, I, 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 did, I did watch PNZ because of number 18 tonight. And um, usually, you know, it's it's odd that, you know, we would get 7 0 denial. I mean, we'd all kind of be in support of it. But um, I, I don't think a lot of them understood exactly what, what that what this is. Um, I know at least one of them has, has, has had a, a change of heart since then. Um, so I think that maybe, I don't know if it's how we presented it, if it was. Too technical. I mean, I understand it. I'm not very sharp as with with, with 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 these things sometimes. So, um, uh, I I don't think it. When I watched the tape, it was that PNZ was adamantly against this. They understood it 100, percent and it was something controversial. I think it was a little bit of confusion, and there was also, as we'll discuss in, in number 18, um, it wasn't the best meeting for PNZ. I think that's what led to the denial. So I, I'm in support of this, and I appreciate your work. Thank you, Commissioner Schieber. Yes, thank you, Heather. Uh, do most communities around us have a, at least a ten-year, or you know, five? Several of the communities of that I've that I've talked to that have that have worked through this this process in the not too distant past um, have multiples of the of the five-year window. Um, some are some are ten, some are twenty, some are are, are are as far as twenty-five. So different places do a little bit different. But again, you're looking at different scale projects when you look at. Clearwater St. Pete versus when you're looking at um, Tarpon. I think that a 10 year window based on what you're seeing over the last 20 years, the projects is reasonable. Um, should they come to you with a phasing schedule that shows you this is what I'm gonna do over time? Well, I think it allows a lot of uh, more flexibility to the developer and uh, <clears throat> more opportunities for our city. So I'm definitely in support of this. Uh, I also watched the tape and I already apologized to you for uh, for what you had to go through, but uh, yeah, nothing further. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Um, can you, it's my understanding, I, I believe we've given, the Board of Commission gives the city manager authority to go negotiate the development agreement and then come back before the board. Am I right in saying that? I think we did that recently, right? Yeah. Okay. Does the city manager negotiate the years in at that point or is that something that's brought back once we vote on it essentially we negotiate the entire all of the basics of the negotiation height uh, the dimensional criteria a number of years a phasing schedule what the project parameters are going to be all of that stuff is discussed it's not approved at that point it's just discussed and negotiated where the city kind of agrees or disagrees based on a technical review of the land development code and the comp plan that this is acceptable or not acceptable based on the a compatibility review right so you're reviewing it, the compliance with the neighborhood um, that then comes to you as the board of well it goes to the planning and zoning board for a recommendation and then comes to you as the board of commissioners you would then basically get a list of these are the criteria that we negotiated as part of that in your staff report and so then you get to have a discussion in open in open session about whether or not you think that that's justifiable based on what the staff's recommending and what you see that the developers provided okay so if it's a site plan um if it's a phasing schedule whatever the issue tends to be so um another quick question is you've got a development agreement and then let's say they get the development agreement in place with the board but then they don't have their site plan yet can they come back Three years later with the site plan codes have changed the site plan then would be under the current code or would it be under the previous code then? it depends on what was in negotiated under the developer agreement now what it basically does is a developer and it kind of freezes in time the issues that you're addressing if you haven't addressed that particular issue when it comes back three years from now in site plan you may be looking at also an amendment to the developer agreement at that time to address that issue if it's something that needs to be addressed because there's a conflict with the code or you want to provide some kind of waiver or that type of thing which are provided under your developer agreement process okay and just real quick so i understand a little bit better what's the incentive to the developer 10 years or five years like what's the benefit i suppose just to have more time to well vet? they basically lock in the the development 
potential of that property under the rules that they've negotiated, right? So it's a negotiated, the zoning is X, but they've negotiated the rules under which that they're going to build under. Um, so the, it gives them a little bit more certainty in that build process that things aren't going to come up that they, they hadn't anticipated. Okay. So uh, like it gives them the chance also to get funding potentially? Or funding, something. grants, or other things. I mean, the developer agreements are used for by a variety of different things. They can be used for affordable housing. Okay. They can be used by commercial developers. They can be used by um, places like a, a city or a county building. Sometimes they'll, they'll do a developer agreement because it gives them more time to deal with some of the issues to go through the process because some of the funding is very difficult to get. Um, and a lot of the lenders want to see more and more and more now. Um, so as a result, it becomes difficult for them to get everything Thing in place in such a short amount of time. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. We are now going to the uh, public comments. Here to Lacus 514 Ashland Avenue, and in deference to George and George, this has nothing to do with you. What I'm going to say. All right. <coughs> Heather just mentioned the Lowe's is the only thing she could bring up that might have been affected. It went through. Now what's five years and 10 years? As she mentioned, at five years, they can come and ask for an extension and you can review it. And as she said, any new codes, they would be applicable at the time. Well, what's wrong with that? You make new codes to improve buildings and other aspects of our city you're going to create a sustainability board. Maybe that comes down later after a development agreement is processed. And later on, you want to have some aspects of that. And I'm going to show you something. 2019, an election for three of y'all. 2020, an election for two. Off year, then three, three more get elected in the fourth year, two more in the fifth year. That can be basically four new boards almost. Why are you going to tie a fourth or a fifth board's hands by giving away to the developers 10 years? Now I'm gonna point out some examples that Heather hasn't pointed out. The Banyans, behind Muzzies in the old Winn-Dixie. See that? Still vacant 10 years later. One thing about five years is you give the developers an incentive to progress and move on. And I would say at this point, and I asked for this years ago, if you're going to give a developer extra time, then you need something in return. And that thing in return should be an insurance bond, some bond, some financial bonding that they will complete the project. Same thing with Mears Crossing. We got screwed on that. You've heard all the people complaining about what got tore up because they didn't understand. And you know why? Because we got tricked. Originally, when we approved that, that was to help the hospital. They were going to build a medical office building. They were going to put a 12-story uh, senior living facility and apartments next door. They were going to create the retail uh, mixed use on the entranceway coming into that road. Now what do we got? We got that big old one acre plus pond covered over and we're going to get just apartments. I haven't heard anything about the retail on the drive going in. And I sure haven't heard too much about the completion of Mears Mango. That's been over 10 years. That was one of the first things we did back, I think, in 06, 07. When did that start? So. I would say, please, I hear y'all all wanting to fan over the developers and everybody's looking about giving these economic benefits and tax breaks and we want to bring, hey, we've got enough resources 
and things that are tangible in our city that people will want to come here and do things anyway. So at this point, you're making a big mistake in giving away your power to go to 10 years <clears throat> versus five. Thank you. Are there any other public comments on this item? Here now, I will chair will detain a motion. Motion. Second. And roll call. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Kikta? Yes. Mr. Seaver? Yes. Vice Mayor Banton? Yes. Merrill, who's excused? Yes, thank you. We are now going to the item number 15, which is the ordinance 2018-27, the application 18. Dash 119 future land use element upland habitat. This is a second reading. Uh, item 15 and item 16 are related. They will be discussed together, but we're going to vote separately. Mr. Turner, if you please read the ordinance. Yes, I just want to let you know that this uh, ordinance was advertised on June 16th, 2018, and again on January 25th, 2019. And I'll read this ordinance by title only. An ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida. Remember the future land use element of the comprehensive plan by revising section three, existing land use data requirements, subparagraph six, and recloding, relocating the density intensity standards for conservation of significant upland habitat adjacent to certain wetlands to new policy 1.1.12 in section V or five, future land use goals, objectives, and policies, revising section four, land use, uh, analysis requirements, subparagraph 7, to remove reference to figure 19 of the coastal planning and conservation element. Revising policy 1.1.10, to remove the reference to figure 19 of the coastal planning and conservation element. Adding policy 1.1.12, 1 1.1.13, and 1.1.14, relocating density and intensity standards for conservation of upland habitat adjacent to certain wetlands and adding a definition of significant upland habitat, providing for correction of Scrivener's errors, providing for other modifications that may arise from the review of this ordinance, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. That was the second final reading of Ordinance 2018-27 by title only. Again, Heather Erler for staff to this, these two applications. Um, since first read on Ordinance 2018-27, which is the future land use amendment, um, based on the discussion that, was ha that happened at first read, we made a few changes on the third page of Exhibit A of the ordinance, which is in the back of your packets. Essentially, what we removed was the contiguous area of five acres or larger of of and then what so what it currently reads is for the purpose of this policy significant upland habitat shall be defined as high quality scrub brushland pine flat woods uh, longleaf pine exeric oaks and hardwood conifer mix as defined by the florida land use cover and forms and classifications or flux as determined by a qualified professional we then added an additional sentence qualified professionals shall be approved by city staff and may be confirmed by the board of commissioners during the public hearing process so that is really the only content change to the ordinance. Uh, since you saw this last, it's gone up to the Department um, of Economic Opportunity, Department of State, and other various uh, agencies at the state level and also at the local level, both the Regional Planning Council and Ford Pinellas see these as well. Um, we've received back uh, most of the comments from the agencies with no comment. They, they have no concerns over the content of this ordinance. They consider this a local issue to be dealt with. So they are not asking for any changes. The modification that we did put in here was a modification based on the discussion that you had during first read on this ordinance. Um, with that, the other additional issue that we just provided to you in your packet as backup um, is a draft ordinance language, which is the modifications that the staff would be bring back to you as a proposal for the changes that need to be made to the land development code. Should you so wish to move forward with these, with these recommendations in the ordinance that we're changing tonight, that basically would address the um, section of the wetland section adding in this qualified professional language 
and also adjusting um, the fee schedule to allow for the city to recoup the cost of that qualified professional from the developer because essentially it's basically a third party review that, that, we're, that we're now going to be dealing with. So with that I can answer any questions on the future land use element. The coastal element is unchanged. The coastal and conservation element has not had any changes since first read. So it's only the changes are in the land are in the uh, future land use element. And I can answer any questions that you have. Heather, I appreciate you spent all the time discussing this ordinance with me the other day at your office. Um, the addition that you just said about the uh, qualified profession just should be approved by the city staff and may be confirmed by the Board of Commissioners during the public hearing process. Uh, with the agreement of the board, I'd like to change the word may to shall. That should become a requirement to come to the uh, BOC. That would be at the discretion of the board. I mean, it's not a change that's going to uh, change the addressing. So it's something that we can make that change. That's the only thing I have. Any commission comments? Any commission comments? No. Uh, are there any public comments on this item? <coughs> I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. With, With the mayor's recommendation. Yes. <coughs> and second? Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? For number 15 only? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banta? Yes. Merrill? Yes, thank you. And now we're going to uh, item number 16, which is the ordinance 2018-28, the application 18-120, the coastal planning area and conservation element. This is second reading. Mr. Attorney, if you please read the ordinance. Yes, I just want to let you know this was legally advertised and published in the Tampa Bay Times on November 2nd, 2018, and again on January 25th, 2019. I'll read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance 2018-28, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the coastal plan and conservation element of the comprehensive plan by revising section two, coastal management data and analysis requirements, subparagraph three, data reference to future land use element policy 1.1.12. Uh, Add additional utility company references to section two, D, four, H, one, F. Modify section six of coastal management goals, objectives and policies by removing reference to figure 19 from the objective policy 1.1, uh, policy 1.1.1 and policy 1.1.4, adding a reference to future land use element policy 1.1.12 to objective 1.1 and policy 1.1.4. Modify section seven, conservation goals, objectives and policies by removing reference to figure 19 from objective uh, 1.6, policy 1.6.1, policy 1.6.3, policy 1.6.6, and policy 1.6.7. Adding reference to conservation <coughs> of and impacts to wetlands and areas of significant upland habitat as defined in future land use policy 1.1.12, policy 1.6.6. Providing for removal of outdated references to the Florida Administrative Code and agency titles, providing for correction of Scrivener's errors, providing for other modifications that may arise from review of this ordinance, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. That was the second and final reading of Ordinance 2018-28 by title only. Thank you. Heather, you already discussed it. Any additional commission comments? Here none. Are there any public comments on this item? The chair will detain a motion. Motion approved. Second. Okay. And roll call, please. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Kikta? Yes. Mr. Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Merrill Hoover? Yes. Before I, walk, before I walk away, can I just get uh, general consensus that you want us to bring back the land development code changes that were in your packet tonight uh, for you to review those? Because I would have to take them to planning board and then bring them back to you. Is that what the board is desiring? So that those sections are implemented in your land development code? Yes. Everybody? Okay. Yes. We'll do that, and so we'll take it to planning board this next month, and then it'll come back in um, March. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Next is item number 17, appointment to uh, Housing Authority Board. This is straightforward. We only have one person interested to be appointed to this Housing Authority Board, Mr. Ferguson. And any comment? No. Any um, I need a motion. 
Motion to. Are there any public comments or this item? Hear none. And a roll call, please. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Kikta? Yes. Mr. Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Panther? Yes. Merrill, who's this? Yes. Okay. And now we're going to item number 18. Conduct of planning and zoning board chair event standards of conduct for city board. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank everyone that's serving on the advisory board for donating their time. Uh, also, uh, uh, Mr. Tom Trask, we had a discussion on the phone that we have many advisory board members been appointed just recently. If we provide them with training, not only on the sunshine law, but also how to conduct productive meetings with respect, professionalism to the staff and to the public. Uh, would you please prepare something like that and give us advice how we should do it? So did you want me to actually prepare standards of conduct or did you want me to go ahead and basically hold a meeting where the different boards and committees can um, attend and maybe give direction orally? How did you want to In accomplish that? In my opinion, that? I think it's better just before the meetings if we spend like a five or ten minutes to have before the meeting just explain some of the things, how to conduct the meeting, how to be, and also include some of the uh, things about the Sunshine Glow that we require for every year. I'd be happy to do that to meet with the boards individually and we can go ahead and schedule that for the, uh, the meetings that are coming up. Um, right now you have my associate Eric Ogello handling the Historic Preservation Board and this Planning and Zoning Board and so I would assume that it would be okay for her to make that presentation. Yes, I'd like to hear from a colleague what they okay. have in mind. Okay, understood. Uh, yes, I agree that um, we do have a lot of new board members and I appreciate all of them volunteering. Um, and I know that there's, uh, I talked to Heather about this, there's some kind of orientation for uh, historic preservation. I think it'd be a good idea to do some type of orientation for all our boards so they can understand their responsibilities, what they're there for, explain uh, the board and include Robert's rules. Um, so I just think it would be a good idea to use uh, an orientation for every new board member that comes on <coughs> to explain to them what the board is about. When looking at that planning and zoning uh, meeting the other night, a lot of those members seemed confused. Uh, some of them didn't even seem to know uh, what, what was going on. And so I wondered if they'd had any kind of training or orientation uh, or introduction to, to that board, because uh, it seemed like they, they definitely were not understanding. So. Um, I'd like to propose that we do some type of orientation or training for every new board member, um, like I said, including uh, for all of them, uh, Robert's rules, so they know how to conduct a meeting. Vice Mayor Panther. Yes, thank you. And I, uh, I agree with your comments, Mayor and Commissioner Sieber. Having been on uh, the, way, the, the way board five years myself prior, 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 prior to my service, and hopefully y'all will put me back on one in April, we'll see. Um, you know, there, there definitely needs to be a uh, decorum. Um, we can teach Robert's Rules of Order. I definitely think that there needs to be an orientation process, and I would look at the city manager, um, more so than the city attorney, to, to come back with, with what he would propose for that. But I, I'm definitely good with what the mayor directed for the city attorney for doing a little, a little, a little, a little, a little brief thing <coughs> right now prior to each uh, meeting. But, you know, the big thing is decorum. I mean, we, we can teach all the rules, and these are very intelligent people that have graciously volunteered their time. I have no doubt that of, of, of their acumen, but we cannot accept certain certain tones to staff. I mean, I w I've watched the meeting. I even sympathize with 80% of the subject matter they were that they were requesting. However, there's many times on this board I've wanted to, you know, kind of get hyper, and I have at times, but, you know, you can't, you just can't do that. And uh, so... Um, I, I don't think what, what I watched led to the level of dismissing anybody, but just giving a warning, giving, 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 giving some training of what we expect. But definitely our staff should never be spoken to in the manner that they were um, at that meeting. If somebody feels that passionately, you know, I would encourage them to schedule a meeting with the, with the city manager. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, and I, I did watch that meeting, and like I said earlier, um, the behavior was unacceptable. 
Um, our staff should not be treated like that. I'm sure all of us here lose, would like to lose our temper up here, but we don't. You conduct yourself properly. Um, and I know we used to have in our in our agenda books the civility. There was something about civility that was printed out. It's in the, the back of the book. I don't, I haven't seen it, um, but I, I think. I asked. I had asked the city manager if we could make sure that they each get a copy of this civility pledge. The rules and <coughs> no, there was a different Our one with civility. Else. Okay. So um, I think there's. Um, and there's also a signed document that they yes. signed that addresses that. Right, and if they could all get a copy of that um, as well, I think that'd be very important. Um, do they all go through the Sunshine Law training like they used to? I know Mr. Hubbard you, had. Uh, did the Sunshine Law class? Do they still do can that? I, can I just add something to this? When a new, when you appoint a new person to any board, our office, me, um, mails out a packet to them. Okay, in that packet includes um, the Sunshine Law PowerPoint presentation that was done by then um, Attorney Yakovon. Um, I'm trying to think what the other thing is. Uh, public Records Law. Okay, and there's one more, the articles, I believe it is. And then they also are asked to take an oath, and in that oath it talks about civility and decorum. Okay, and they, also, they are also asked to look at the video we have online on our city website, and they have to sign that they watched it and, mail, and send it back to me, that they watched the video of that. And that is the presentation that Attorney Yakimon did do on the public records law. Okay, so we do so, have some, some so they don't go process. in blind more or less so they are given some information and, and once once we thank you for that Michelle once we um, have a meeting or the city attorneys uh, have a meeting with the board that's that's it there's no you know this warning and warning we need to start setting an example um, I'm sorry you know and I, I appreciate everybody volunteering for our boards I, sh I surely do because I know um, we have a hard time finding residents to come out and volunteer, but there's a level of respect that is is, re is required in this room and um, and towards our city staff. So uh, I would agree with uh, the mayor's suggestion, <coughs> and uh, let's move forward on that. Commissioner Carr, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was served on like seven years of different advisory boards, so I know firsthand that we struggled with training from a city perspective and that's something i asked for right when i was elected and we've had some discussions in the past but there hasn't been a whole lot of follow-through so um i'm kind of disappointed in that aspect that there hasn't been follow-through uh along those lines but um i'm excited that we're and i'm sorry that a, a situation had to arise for this to happen but it, i'm excited that this brings forth an opportunity to um, it exposes an area, maybe a weakness of the training aspect, uh, other than what the city clerk's office provides. So, uh, to me, I'm encouraged by that. Um, a couple other things, though, I, I could relate to like the frustration from the board because when I was on the board, I believe it was um, the city attorney Don, Don you at the time told us that we're an advisory board that we do not send information to the commission or ask the commission to do anything that we advise a commission based on what they're asked to do. And I was really frustrated as a resident and sitting on a uh, board appointed by the commission that if you have a bunch of passionate individuals from the, um, the city who are residents who are volunteering their time and they have some good ideas, how do you get it to the city commission? And I know it was explained during the meeting, Erica explained that you have to have a, cons a consensus, it has to be clear. Um, but I, I think that needs to be more clear and we as a board of commission need to have better communication through the city manager from the boards. If they see something that the commission can improve upon for the city, we should know about it and it should be communicated to us and not if the city manager finds it appropriate or not to communicate it to us. So um, I would like to encourage all of our boards to communicate to the city manager and make sure they understand that if you want to communicate to the city commission and you would like it more or something else to be done similar to how the residents will come up and public comment and make a, a suggestion 
um, this is what we're here to serve and we've asked these individuals to serve as well so there's an opportunity to hear their voice as a board and when you're as a board I think we should take respect and respect their time and listen to the recommend recommendations that they have um, overall but uh, yeah city staff city attorneys uh, I believe Erica was disrespected I think a few times in the um, board of adjustment meeting if I'm not if I'm if I'm wrong, please correct me, but correct. Um, correct. I, I mean, I, I, we need to look at that and we really need to be careful because the way our city attorneys are here, they're, they're paid, yes, but they're still professionals that we're asking them to be here. So um, if we're looking at this, we I think I definitely need to look at the Board of Adjustment as well in that aspect on how the city attorneys are being treated um, in the, their meetings. So, thank you. Thank you. So the first, do you want to comment? No. Okay. No. No. I'll, I'll count it. I think the most important thing is, like you said tonight. First of all, you need to send the message. Um, we've had boards get in front of you and tell you we know what the law is, but we're going to do something else. We've had boards disrespect the attorneys. We had boards disrespect staff. I think the importance of tonight is enough is enough. And like you say, we can add anything else. I'm sure the attorney can do another video. The video on. The video that we have there to watch on the, on the uh, Sunshine Lawns, that's a very good video to watch and get that information. Um, but there's also some things, and there's some things that are actions that are not due to training that are other actions. And I just think they need to know. And I think, you know, as you told the city attorney tonight, if these boards do anything to step in line, for instance, the attorney tells them they're doing something against law, against procedure, they continue to do it if the city attorney tells them in the course of the meeting as they go they're out of line what they're doing they continue it then that they all know they signed the oath they've seen the training you know i'm sure any other training we can give them but you know there's some things and actions of people that you can do all the trainings you know this was a member that's been on board for a long time um but i think the right step is what we're doing now but it's just got to be the word this you know, we can't have them breaking the law. We can't have them disrespecting, ignoring blatantly attorneys. We can't have them doing staff. And by what you're doing tonight and sending that message that here it is, a reminder of how they're supposed to act. And then, you know, then if they don't act, then, you know, you don't have to throw You can just tell them that uh, we're going to go alternate. Thank you for your service. And we're moving along elsewhere. So I think it's along the right step tonight. And, and we've just got to get a handle of it and, uh, and do that. So. I think we're along the right step. We're going along the, the right step. And again, if you watch that meeting in the uh, and if you watch the past meetings, I tend to watch all of them, especially some boards that are problem. But you know, they never made a clip. You know, again, you've got one individual thinks they can direct things. It'd be like someone on this board thinking they could direct things to go. Well, it's not. It's the board. One per I've wanted this. If you hear this language, I've wanted this. I've wanted this. But you never went to your whole board. You never took. You never took the action as a board to bring something forward and get it to me. That was, that's what Heather was trying to get them to do that. Hey, here is this. If you see, she gave them information in December that was obviously none of them had read at the January meeting to, to know the ramifications of it. So things like that are very difficult to do, but in that case, anything they bring forward to me that they want to get to you, um, again, why it comes to me is because we have other ramifications. If we're, you know, we don't want to sit there and, and pick and choose and do every board if we're going to talk about what was talked about at the meetings and we're going to do extending the notification. Well, there's a lot of boards we do that. So we really, when it comes to me, I need to put together and get to you. They brought this forward, but I need to look at all areas, you know, the HPB boards, the other boards has got 200 to 500. We, you don't want to go back and do a bunch of things changed. We need to look at it and do that stuff. But they never brought that forward to go to me, um, to get the information to me to go. So again, the clarification, the, how you get things to the city manager whose job is to get them to you a little bit of explaining of that and stuff we'll do it and then they just know that this board's you know had enough and i think you know by the tone tonight they know that and uh, i think we're on a good start to moving forward um, well I, i'd be happy to um to do this i do it in all my other cities uh, when there is an issue that comes up to start meeting with the boards uh, for me I, i'm hearing us talk about the Sunshine Law, Robert's Rules, Standards of Conduct, uh, Public Records Law, Civility, Decorum, all these different types of things. Um, I, I agree with the city manager that we can teach them what the law is, 
but some of these things don't have anything to do with the law. It has to do with being a good person, being civil, and understand that everyone is due um, to have uh, whatever they're doing respected for the work that they're doing. Um, but I will absolutely um, get on the agenda for every single committee or board that we have that meets regularly. Um, I will take 10 or 15 minutes of their time to address the major topics. Um, and if there is more time needed, um, then I will come back. I don't want to waste their time uh, when they're having business to have uh, be accomplished by that particular meeting. But, um, um, but you know, if I have the direction, I think I've got it here that I am to do that, um, we'll start it immediately. So um, thank you for the direction, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Here none. Thank you. Well, that concludes the regular session agenda. <coughs> and we will now go to the CRA. I now call to order the Community Redevelopment Agency meeting of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, February 12, 2019. And the time is 8, 10 p.m. Roll call, please. Meryl Huzis? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. We have one item on the agenda that is to approve the extension of lease agreement on uh, for the 61 West Tarpon Avenue staff report. Thank you, Mayor. Karen Lemons, Economic Development Manager. And this is a one-year extension of the lease that was approved last March for the property located immediately west of the former Sun Bay Motel. Um, the original lease was one year with a one-year option to renew, and tonight we're um, looking to exercise that option and renew it for an additional year. The lease terms remain unchanged. Um, the original lease is in your, your backup materials. Um, just as an overview, in the past year, as you know, the motel was raised, the vacant land was improved, and the building was improved. We're currently using the building as a community redevelopment center. Um, it's also used by primarily by economic development. It's used by planning and zoning. It's used by the police department. The traffic unit works out of that office. Um, it's also used as a convenient um, community area for the police to write reports and um, make stops. We've had several meetings there with developers, realtors. It's been um, very favorable to have the location as a satellite office to be able to afford having the meetings there when you're talking about the development that's happening right there you can walk the people around the area they can take a look and see what the potential is for that land we've also it's been great for the business people in the downtown and the docks area it's convenient for them to come stop in the crc and have meetings um, with myself and others. We've also used it for outside agencies that have had meetings there, and some departments here have used it for um, additional meetings. Um, regarding um, the development opportunities on that, on that property, we've continued to work with developers, realtors, and the property owner um, of that land looking at potential opportunities. We have um, a grant application in to Ford Pinellas that would give us money to do a best and highest use analysis for that area I think would be um, give us a nice guiding step forward to what type of potential development we could see there um, we've had opportunities with our historic preservation um, both grants that we have pending one with the Ford Pinellas the other that we received for the design guidelines for historic preservation. Both have committed use of that property for focus groups um, and citizen um, forums have an opportunity for the public to come in and talk about um, both the historic preservation issues and what they would like to see on that property for our other grant. And we should know, I believe in April, whether we receive the Ford Pinellas grant. So overall, again, this is a, a one-year extension that would um, go through next March and then we would be coming back if we don't have a development there and would like to renew it again for that year and with that I'll entertain any questions thank you any commission comments Commissioner Kick. thank you um, thanks Karen for bringing this forward but as you know um, 
I cannot um, support this. I, I haven't supported it from the beginning because we're paying taxpayers' money. We're paying $10,000 a year to rent that building and to pay the taxes on the land next to it. Um, I just can't support it. It's been a year. We're paying. Um, we're paying to showcase somebody else's property. I know we want to develop down there. I understand that. But we have buildings in town that we can have focus groups at. The old library, old city hall, um, city hall, which we've done in the past. And um, I just, I just can't support continuing to use taxpayers' money to to um, showcase somebody else's property when that that property owner has had 20 plus years to build on that property and he still hasn't brought anything forward. Yes, I would love to see something down there, please. I would love to have a, a boutique hotel or mixed use property, but I don't think that it's our responsibility to continue to um, showcase his property and pay $10,000 a year on this. You know, it was a million dollars to tear down the Sun Bay. On, we can't even build on that little piece of strip. And then we're paying this. We we put uh, money into improving that building. We cleaned up the lot. It looks great. It looks fabulous. But I think that the owner should have done this to begin with. That the, those are just my thoughts right now. But thank you. Yes, right, thank you. Uh, um, and 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 the one, the one, the one. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I have seen the value in this over, uh, over, over over the past year for the for the things you mentioned. I know I I, I have one real estate deal uh, downtown, and the buyers met you there. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was very convenient for them. I, I think is um is a less intimidating setting and a more appropriate setting than maybe City Hall. And I know some of us here might not be able to fathom that, but for people that aren't in city life, uh, I, 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 I think it makes a difference. I, I'm very pleased that with that, 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 that we have control um, of that corner. You know, even even as Commissioner Kick has said, and we're, we're, on, we're, we're on different sides of this issue, it looks beautiful down there. Compared, compared, uh, uh, though, 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 compared to to what it did, and I also like, and we 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 saw, we, we saw this at 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 at, 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 um, at, at, at at the Epiphany, the ability for the for the for the police to use that as well. So I think it's a very small price to pay for our for our investment down there. Uh, you know, I will say, obviously, I I will I will I won't be on the board this time next year, but you know. Uh, we will have to see, obviously, deliverables as we continue to want to renew uh, to 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 renew this lease. We don't want to have this to be permanent down there, but I do support renewal, and I I I I I I, 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 I do hope in the next year that that this building will help bring forth some 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 kind of development, uh, you know, on that corner. Thank you very much. Thank you, thanks, Karen. You know, I'm on the other side. Uh, I never supported spending uh, almost a million dollars of taxpayers' money to, to purchase that property that's not worth anywhere close to that. Um, and then we spent the money to develop it, and um, we haven't really gone anywhere in a year as far as doing something with that property. Um, I appreciate everything you say as far as meeting there, but I feel like we have City Hall for meetings. We have real estate offices for real estate deals. No offense to you. Um, Vice Mayor, um, we just continue to spend taxpayers' money, which I think is wrong. Um, I drive by there 50 times a day. Um, I, I usually don't see anybody there. Um, so I don't know how. I know you say it's been utilized, and I, I understand that. Uh, but I'm not sure it's being utilized to the extent of what we're paying. Um, so I, I, I can't approve spending any more money on that piece of property. Thank you. Thanks for the update. Uh, I think you did a good job emphasizing how the city uses it today. Um, also, I know the snow place that you used, and the, like Commissioner or Vice Mayor Ma Panther mentioned, with uh, the safety for Epiphany, it's used, and um, I, I do see a value. It's not that much money, um, relatively speaking, to the majority of the things that we approve on a weekly or monthly basis for this property to have some control over it from a safety perspective. Um, I think it makes sense. And also to have some additional uses for the events that happen down there, I think it makes sense as well. So 
Um, it's a one-year renewable lease. I think we'll look at it for another year, see how far it progresses if additional development happens and we reevaluate in the next year. I think it's pretty simple. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. I want to thank you for bringing this forward. But <coughs> actually, the, uh, the, the area looks very, very nice. It's done a lot of work. It's been cleaned up. I've seen a lot of people using now, and it's, it's safe. And uh, actually, I received quite a few phone calls from the uh, neighborhood, from the neighbors. They are very, uh, very pleased the way it looks. Uh, do you think within a year that we'll be able to find someone to develop the area? I know you're working very hard, and uh, you'll be meeting different people there, uh, so they can see then you know the uh, what uh, what it will look like if, if we get that developed. What, what you feeling on that? Well, we certainly would hope so. Um, I can't promise anything. We've been working with several different developers and have had some meetings over the type of development that would go there. As you know, the, um, the initial design that the property owner was looking at was a mixed use with some retail, cafe, and uh, residential. Um, there's a second um, proposal out there that's focusing only on residential. It would be townhomes kind of um, living there without any of the retail. So there's some other options that are coming forward. I, I can't promise whether we're gonna have something definitive for you within a year. You know, the site has its challenges as well, parking being one of them. Um, so we're working with planning on different issues that we may be coming forward to in terms of looking at that transact and what potentially could be there and what you might want to do to tweak the code if we needed to. So those are some issues that we'll have, but um, you know, time will tell. Okay. Uh, if we keep it for another year, do you think it's a very good possibility that we might have a development going there? Because you're there constantly, you, or you get to see people. Uh, if you were, and you're using it as a satellite office, what happens if we don't have that? Is that going to be a, uh, a difficulty for you to be able to short, showcase a place? To be well, built? What's, what the advantage is, and I think many cities would love to have a satellite office like that that we have that's right in the city and very um, easy to get to and convenient. But what's nice about having that there is we have control of that entire property okay. and can show what the potentials are. Um, if you had somebody else in that building, it would make it, you know, much more difficult. We'd have to work around that. Okay. Thank you. Are there any uh, public comments on this item? Any public comments on this item? I hear none. I will entertain a motion. Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Mr. Tikta? No. Mr. Sieber? No. Vice Chair Banther? Yes. Cheryl Hoops? Yes. Well, that concludes the CR8 agenda, and we go to the staff comments. Police Chief? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. City Attorney? Uh, no comments. Thank you. City Manager? No, sir. Thank you. Vice Mayor? And welcome back. Thank you. Yes, sir. I think I think my jet lag's gone. So, uh, Sunday was a little a, a, a little rough, and I uh, but I felt like Commissioner Carr because we walked down to Sunset Beach from our house with 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 our with our with our with our with our with our, with our, with our little dog we have now, okay. and my two daughters to get some sunshine, and uh, that did help. Uh, yes, so I got to present the 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 Lord Mayor of Dublin with the key to the city and our proclamation. And a and a Irish tempet. I don't 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 like 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 the, this Irish this, this this like Irish lightning shirt, and uh, he was very well received of it, and uh, he's been to Clearwater, so he's familiar with the area, and uh, we just talked city politics for five minutes. They have like forty plus commissioners for Dublin, and wow. the Lord Mayor only serves one term, and you're appointed by the commission. And he says that when you get appointed Lord Mayor, you 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 lose re-election. Uh -huh. I don't know. I guess you're not focusing on your district, whatever. But anyway, so it seems like it's more of a uh, thing you do at the end of your career. But it was nice to be received there again, and so that they now have two keys to the city there. Um, so hopefully somebody else can go next year, maybe get them a third. I don't know, but they're, it's very, it's very well received, and uh, 
he he was very kind. He's going to be sending the mayor uh, a thank you letter for for the for the for the for the proclamation. And thank you for representing our city. Always. Mm. Thank you, Commission Kicker. Um, no, I don't have any comments. Okay, Commission Sue. I was just going to say I don't have a key to the city. <laughs> we all get one when like, we leave, right? So. Okay. <laughs> the, the president of, of Greece has one. <laughs> uh, I'll give you one. Okay. Just joking. Uh, I don't have any other comments. Thank you. Commissioner Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, just want to say thank you to um, the, the Board of Commission, Mayor, um, City Manager, City Attorney, and the Clerk's Office for your condolences for my father in law. Um, he passed away uh, Friday, February 1st, around 5.20. Um, he was one of these guys that um, just was a great guy. He was a war veteran, sprayed with Agent Orange, passed away from complications from Agent Orange, um, leaves a great family behind, has a lot of great memories, um, has just a, a huge legacy that he left, um, man of character and integrity. And just want to, again, say thank you for reaching out uh, via email and phone calls. And I really appreciate uh, the flowers as well at the service. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Carter, I want to ex extend my deepest condolences to you and to your family. And uh, and may his memory be eternal. I uh, also have some announcements to make. Saturday, February 16, we have a movie on the uh, Splash Park, which is located on Live Oak. That begins at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday, February 23rd, we have the uh, Touch and Truck on East Lemon Street by the library. Same day, February 23rd, we have the Wine Walk starting from uh, Tarpon Avenue at 4 p.m. Uh, February 23rd, we have the uh, Star uh, Casing at the Sunset Beach that begins at 6.30 p.m. And... Uh, Police Chief Coachman, I want to congratulate the Police Department for receiving the uh, accreditation. Thank you. Recommendation. Yeah, and uh, right. we are very, very happy and very proud to have us. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Well, that concludes our CRA meeting today, and it's adjourned at 8.26 p.m.